Hey gorgeous, I wanted to let you know about my mentorship program, Authentic Body. Now I've been doing this without kind of advertising it for quite a while now really. Um, and But if you're used to me just being a channel for Aurora and just doing readings, then this, the Authentic Body might confuse you a little bit. So I wanted to give you a little bit of history and some information and hopefully some ideas of what to do if you feel like you have compulsive behavior or obsessive behavior when it become, comes to your weight, food, smoking, drinking, you know, it's all the same kind of codependency. So my, ex, my reason for wanting to pursue and wanting to bring out this next level of my mentorship is because I'm really passionate about us, as women in particular, reclaiming our bodies and deciding for ourselves what we want our relationship with our body to be like and how we want to be in our body. Everybody, every woman has got a right to feel at home in her body. And also, everyone has got a right to make the changes that they might want to with their weight and their body. Now that might sound pretty straightforward, but let me share you a little bit of personal experience in case this is going off for you at a subconscious level, like it was for me, because blocks to weight loss is what I really specialize in, in clearing those blocks so that it becomes about allowing your body goals to be experienced rather than having to fight them with diets and willpower. I don't do that anymore. So some of you might know that I, until six years ago, I had a constant battle with my weight. I have healed myself from bulimia, um, some body image stuff, emotional eating I could inhale the kitchen at some points just could not believe how much I could eat in one go and deep shame around my body and I was either severely restricting my eating and so that I could be a size 10 um, and getting to the point where it felt like it, black coffee tasted like chocolate um, I didn't know what tasted real and what wasn't real anymore or I spent most of my time oscillating between 16 up to a size 22 and spent quite a lot of time at a size 22. And then six years ago, I decided to radically change my life. Um, <laughs> I asked to be a channel of the light. It was just before I started to, ch to channel Aurora. My life completely changed. I stopped waiting for life to happen to me and my weight dropped off and I started living more of the life that I wanted to live. And so it kind of just, it, I used EFT along the way and it kind of just happened in this really ease-filled, progressive way and just using energy modalities, energy therapies that I knew to help me over little lumps and bumps. And then when it came to athletic goals now, I'm still coming across blocks. And it's like, those of you that are familiar with working with um, other kind of blocks, you know, like anything that you're in relationship with, whether that's your money or your relationships, there's always another aspect of the journey to go, and that's what it's like with body and weight. So one of the blocks that I hit was I'd been to two classes of CrossFit and discovered the fact that I love to lift heavy weights terrified of going to the gym my god I'd only been once in my whole 42 years of life I think and ran out as soon as I went in but CrossFit was different and I went to watch my first CrossFit competition and at that time I was really struggling with the fact that I wanted a very toned body because I didn't want to belong to this collective that I see where women's bodies are objectified and like strong is the new sexy I didn't want it to be for that I didn't want it to be about what I looked like although I liked the look and it was just really confusing for me and it was like am I just conditioned or is this what I really want and 
almost like, did I have the right to it? Was I letting feminism down or something by not just being okay with where I was? And I was okay. It was just a really confusing time for me. And one of the ways that I know that my soul or source is speaking to me is I feel awe. Wherever I feel awe, I know I'm connected with a beauty that is resonant for me. And I also know that source has no judgment. So source don't give a flying monkeys whether my body's a size 22 or a size 10. What source cares about is what I feel about that and how empowered I am and how I am, whether I'm living an authentic life or not. And for those of us that feel that the channels were star seeds, were light workers, service is really important to us. So I've got all that kind of, you know, background going on in my life and I was at this CrossFit competition and I saw this woman doing pull-ups and I could on the bar and I could see her from behind. So really, you know, not what we'd associate with divine feminine of being receptive. She was really powered up, really strong in her core and her back, I could just see all of the muscles and all of the form of her body and it was she was healthy and it just looked beautiful and I felt awe and and I just I thought I was just blown away it was beautiful and I just found myself crying and I felt awe and crying and so for me that is source flowing through me saying this is for you and crying to me when I cry like that it tends to mean I want more of that for me in my life and so I really then gave myself permission to go for it and it's like I had to reclaim my body from society from other women from women in my life from women on Facebook from anybody else my body is nobody's business but mine and as long for me as long as i am treating my body with respect i'm listening to its messages i'm trusting it i'm working in partnership with my you know with me my body is me then how i want to experience that body is completely up to me and this is not for everybody. I think every woman has a right to feel at home in her body, whatever size, whatever form, just whatever. Um, but this was new for me because when I feel source flow through me with awe like that, and when I am going after, going after, when I am pursuing or trying to attain a goal, that is significant and meaningful to me and is heart-centered, I'm serving source. So, and this is very personal. This is not the truth for every single person out there. But that day really floored me because I knew that for me to create an athletic body that I want to experience and to be able to do everything that I want to do with that body is a service to source. And for those of us that are light workers, then the service is really important. If you don't want to do that with your body and you want to do something else and you are something else, that can also be a service to source. I'm not saying there's a particular one way. What I'm saying is your body, you have the right and give you permission to experience the body shape that you want to. So that's why I created Authentic Body. So that we can feel at home in our bodies. And it's a combination of my training in the drugs and alcohol field. Same principle, same cycle of change, same obsessive behavior, same compulsive behavior. I've been and combined with that training, my own personal journey, my use of EFT, my skills as an empath, um, being able to read energy and also to channel information about the blocks kind of feel like as Cara this is my life's work um, as a channel I don't know what that's going to look like and I'm still going to be offering channeled messages on my site so soul link is now developed into offering authentic body and offering mentorship and the idea is that we bring 
peace to the table, you know, that make friends with food, achieve your body goals, and mainly through clearing blocks, blocks to weight loss, blocks to your authentic body. So the first block can be how you feel about your current weight and how you feel about your current eating. So if there's any guilt, um, any shame, you know, we can tend to feel like, why can't I stop eating? Am I just crazy? Is there something wrong with me? And there isn't. And one of the things that I love about EFT, um, about Psyche K and the other energy modalities that I use, then we don't have to use willpower. We still have to engage choice. We still have to make behavioral changes. But if we clear the blocks, it becomes a lot easier. And the clients that I'm working with and have worked with have been kind of astounded at some of the changes that can happen. So one woman went to from just not being able to stop drinking more than one glass of wine. You know, I'm just going to have a glass of wine and then the bottle will be gone by the end of the night. You know, whoever knows that one. And um, we did some tapping together on that one. We didn't even have to find the root issue. And she just moved quite straight, really straightforwardly into just having a glass of wine a night. Other people feel like they can eat like a a normal thin person <laughs> for the first time in their life. That's it, excuse me. <coughs> That's the feedback that I've had. So there's lots more and I'm gonna go into that. I'm gonna start sending out a collection and a series of videos about blocks to weight loss and a blocks to your authentic body. And um, I'll leave you with these four main ones that I've come across. So when we feel guilty, when we feel ashamed of our bodies and what we're doing with our behavior, we feel out of control, we feel compulsive, we feel obsessive, we just can't stop thinking about food or the cigarette, we want to know that we've got supply. I used to be really anxious if I knew that I didn't have any cigarettes in the house. You know, we want to know that we've got those few bottles of, of um, alcohol and it can feel like we're insane. Um, and even just feeling like that about our behavior is enough to make us think that we don't deserve change. You know, if you can't criticize yourself and make effective changes in your life at the same time, it's really hard to do that. So that is not worthy of, um, not worthy of that, that goal, that, not worthy to lose weight, you're not, that's all kind of linked in with that not deserving. Um, it's not part of your self-image, that's a massive one. We tell our story, we tell ourselves a story about who we are. I'm a problem, I'm a person that's always going to have an issue with my weight. I've had an issue with my weight for ages. I'm an overweight person. Try this. I'm a person who happens to be carrying some weight. I'm a person, I'm carrying some weight rather than I'm a fat person, I'm over, I'm over an overweight person. We are not, when we're overweight, we are not a different breed. We're carrying some weight. And I know from my own weight loss, <laughs> I have weight loss story. I definitely, when I was at my biggest, I was carrying lots of weight and not all of it was mine. You know, look, living a life that other people wanted me to live, being a way that other people wanted to live, it was not mine, the life or the weight. And to drop that is amazing, is amazing. And another one that can be is like, who would I be if I didn't have this weight issue? When I worked in the drugs and alcohol field, one of the things that we always ask people is, you know, put the drinking to one side for a moment, what else is going on in your life? If that wasn't an issue, you know, just what else is going on in your life? And also, if that drinking or that substance use or that eating or that smoking wasn't an issue for you anymore, what would you be freed up to do? Most of the time it's like, well, I won't be able to hide from having a relationship. I'd have to face up to some stuff that's going on in my marriage. Or, well, I'd really have time to do all that business stuff that I really want to do and I'm not sure I want to face that yet. So it's really fascinating and I love helping people to see 
that they're just stories that you tell yourself and you can change it you can change it so like I say I am going to be sending out a series of emails and videos about your authentic body if you want any more information about the current mentorship program let me know speak to you soon bye